Well, it had to happen at some point. I've let the magic smoke out. Well, this isn't the uh, video I intended to make this week. Um, I was actually putting together a, uh, another YouTube video with instructions on testing the new DIY BMS controller boards. I had just received the second batch of controller boards, which had been delayed in transit by DHL after getting stuck somewhere in Germany. So I was keen to try them out and make sure that the uh, latest changes work as expected. Then this happened. Well, maybe not that dramatic, but a few wisps of white smoke and the classic smell of burning electronics. Looking at the board, you can see where the diode went pop, and there's a nice crack right along the top of it. So why did this happen? The diode is part of the relay circuit. There are two of these on the controller. Here's the circuit diagram for them. We can see that there's a 5 volt connection to the coil of the relay, and then a MOSFET is used as a switch to provide a connection to ground when the controller wants to energise the relay. On the left is an LED and the resistor at the bottom simply ensures that the MOSFET is held in the off state if the controller isn't connected. The diode which went bang is in the middle of the diagram. When used in this configuration it is often known as a flyback diode and is there to protect the uh, components when the relay is switched off. A diode has a polarity and only allows current to flow in one direction. A flyback diode is placed in reverse polarity so in normal operation it is off and not conducting. So the diode looks like it's configured correctly in this circuit. So let's get a little deeper and look at the data sheet for the relay. The data sheet tells us loads of things, but for now, all we're interested in is the coil current at 5 volts, which is just under 72 milliamps. So when we want to switch on the relay, about 72 milliamps is needed through the relay coil and that MOSFET to energise the relay. Because a relay is a mechanical device with a coil of wire in it and a magnetic field, when we switch off that relay, that 72 milliamps and the voltage in the coil need to go somewhere. When the relay is switched off, the, the voltage reverses and changes direction, which is why the diode is placed in a backwards or reverse polarity. The diode then allows that voltage to be handled safely without damage to the MOSFET or other components. So let's take a look at the diode I picked. This is just a standard part from the JLC component list. Uh, according to the data sheet, it can handle 71 volts and up to 300 milliamps of current. That's well within the range we have of uh, 5 volts to 72 milliamps. So why did the diode destroy itself? Well, simply, that was my fault and purely sim simple human error. Although the circuit diagram of the parts are correct, I incorrectly labelled the silk screen on the PCB. I must have seen that the 5 volt track and then placed a positive symbol next to it. When I got the boards made, I incorrectly rotated the part to match the symbol and at that moment that poor diode's fate was sealed. Luckily no real harm was done, the diode is e easily replaced, although soldering surface mount parts can still be a nightmare, even for someone who's done loads of surface mount soldering. I was obviously having a very bad day here. I've also got one other problem on these boards and that is with the SD card socket. It should have faced towards the right hand side of the board, but for some reason I've ended up with it facing into the board. Still, that is why these are called prototypes and you'll be glad to know that I fixed both of these problems since filming. I know this controller has been a long time in the making, but as you can see I don't want to really publicly release something which I've not tested. Um, but I think we're there now. All the interfaces on the board work as expected, so I finally think we're good to go. If you've watched to this point, well done and thank you. As usual, give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what other types of video would be useful to you. I'd also like to thank my new Patreon supporters who help fund these prototypes, even if some of these actually turn out to be failures. If you want to support the project, the link is in the description and on screen now. I'll be releasing the first public version of the controller very soon, probably in the next few days. Um, so there are still a few days left to get your name on the back of it. Just sign up using Patreon. Thanks for watching and keep an eye out for the controller which should be released very soon.